is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us for worship. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, as merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our occasional hearts of stone with hearts that constantly love and adore you, that we may always delight in doing your will and love one another as our Lord has taught us. Have compassion on your creation. Quench the fires, still the storms, and help all to recover. Bless all government leaders with patience and wisdom and bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Healer of our many ills, bless all whom we lift up before you this morning. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Gospel reading for today is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of a pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him one hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So. My heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the risen Christ. Amen. You know, it seems that wherever we turn, at, uh, I don't want to throw all of you in with me, wherever I turn, I see before me picture after picture of people who've lost weight. Maybe that's just me. Maybe you don't see all those things. It's just me. You know, Bob lost 125 pounds over here. Sue lost 50 pounds over here, and and Joe lost 75 pounds here doing nothing. 
The other day, I actually saw a picture of a German shepherd dog who had lost 50 pounds, and they were just singing his praises, saying how disciplined this dog was and how disciplined his owners were and, and how much healthier the dog was. And, <laughs> of course, at about the time I was seeing all these things, I had a doctor's appointment, at which time my doctor says, as he's always said for the last 20 years, he said, Padre, he calls me Padre, said, Padre, you know, if you lost this weight, you'd probably feel a whole lot better, and you wouldn't be complaining about the things you're complaining to me about. And I said, I know, eat less, move more, eat less, move more, but, 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 you know, all that, all that kind of thing. Lauren Steele, who's a, who's a writer, wrote in the Men's Journal that, that, you know, the best way to lose weight if you're going to the gym is to have a personal trainer. That over 30% of the folks lose 30% more weight if they have a personal trainer. Somebody supervising their workouts. What does a personal trainer do? I mean, what I've, I've never, I haven't had one, but what does he do? Well, or she do. A reputable, qual, qualified personal trainer probably has varying degree of knowledge about exercise. They know what exercises work and what exercises don't. Uh, he or she probably is a cheerleader, motivates their clients and cheers them on and encourages them on hard and bad days and, and all of that. Uh, they measure their clients' strengths and weaknesses, can assess where they are at the beginning of this fitness journey and figure out how they're doing along the way. And they probably know something about diet and nutrition. You know, they know what you should be eating and what you should be staying away from, all of that. And my response to, that, uh, response to that is, okay, I get it. I really do. I get it. But let's leave for a moment the, the world of physical training and think of spiritual training. If we want to be spiritually fit, spiritually mature is another way of talking about it, whom would we go to, who would we want, in other words, as a fitness trainer? Maybe pastors, they'd be good. Maybe mentors who are Christians, trusted friends who follow the Lord. They could all fall into that category. Yet really, who could be a better personal trainer, spiritual trainer, than Jesus himself? A trainer who specializes in forgiveness. I mean, you know. Anybody who hangs on the cross and is innocent and yells out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, knows something about forgiveness, right? Does forgiveness fitness work? Yeah. A gal by the name of Scarlett Lewis lost her six-year-old son in the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary School back in 2012. You might remember that. Twenty children were killed, and Scarlett was devastated at the loss of her son, as were all those other folks. And at first her anger sapped all of her energy and her strength that and she was angry with the shooter. She was angry at the shooter's mom. If you remember that, if you remember that, uh, it was discovered that the shooter's mom actually enabled him to, to get the ammunition and the guns that he used. But you see, then she made actually a choice. She prayed about it, thought about it. She made a choice to forgive. She said, forgiveness was like I was given a big pair of scissors. And those scissors were able to help her cut the tie, her tie to the shooter. It started with a choice, she said, and then it became a process. And at her son's funeral, she stood up and urged all the mourners to get rid of their bitterness and their anger and turn their anger into loving thoughts in Jesus' name. And she saw this as a... And the shift is a way to change the world. Forgiveness starts with a choice and then becomes a process. Jesus urges us to make this choice for ourselves when he responds to Peter's question about the number of times we should forgive. Now, you probably know that Peter thought he was being magnanimous in our text for today. He comes to Jesus just after Jesus has given them instructions on how to lovingly confront someone who is in the wrong. You know, how to lovingly correct someone. And we can imagine Peter thinking, well, here's my opportunity to shine as the best student in the class. I'm going to hit this ball out of the ballpark. Jesus is going to like this. 
There was a Jewish law that said if someone wronged you, you would be expected to forgive three times. After that, all bets were off. After the third offense, you, you didn't need to forgive anymore. Three strikes, you're out, right? So with this in mind, Peter comes to Jesus and he says, so Lord, what do you, what do you think? What, what, what if, what if I forgive seven times? I can do that. That's pretty good, huh? I mean, right? That, that's twice as much as the law says, plus one for good measure. And besides, seven is the perfect number. We can imagine a big smile on Peter's face is just out. Uh, nobody else offered seven times. And you know, I can imagine Jesus with a kind of a smile on his face, love in his heart, saying, you know, nice try, Pete. Really nice try. I see, I see what you did there. But here's the truth. You, you don't forgive seven times, but 70 times seven, or 77 times. Now, the point isn't that we stop at 77. Okay, you have sinned against me 77 times. This is 78. Forget it or 490 times, 491, forget it. However you count it, however you count it, Jesus is saying that our forgiveness should be countless, numberless, limitless. He's like the personal trainer at the gym, you know, who's counting our reps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 77. 490, 1,579, keep going. Jesus, the forgiveness trainer. Forgive a multitudinous number of times. Not even sure that's a word. But forgive higher than you count, he says. Make the choice to do it and turn it into a process. Why does Jesus say this? I mean, what's, what's the big deal about forgiveness anyway? Really, I mean, you know. Forgiving the people that have hurt us can be hard to do, much tougher than lifting a stack of weights at the gym. Still, Jesus demands it. He demands it. Doesn't, doesn't offer it up as a suggestion. It's, it's a demand because forgiveness is good for us, not just for, for the person who needs to be forgiven, but for you, the person who's doing the forgiving. You know, many folks aren't able to do that. Many folks are unforgiving. Memories like an elephant. Hold on to things for years and years. And sometimes, unfortunately, many people fail to forgive ever. So Jesus tells a story of a servant today in our gospel lesson. Let's call him, let's, let's call him Frank, who owes his boss a lot of money. It says 10,000 talents. Well, a talent was worth one year's wage. So 10,000 talents would be 20 years salary and in terms of how much money it would be. 10,000 times 20, is that 200,000? 200,000 years worth of salary? You've got to be kidding me. 200,000 years worth of salary? Well, obviously, Frank can't come up with that kind of cash. It's huge. It's, uh, it's, you, can't, you can't even begin to pay it back. You can't even begin to think about paying it back. What's that about? Right? So since Frank can't pay it, can't even begin to pay it, the boss orders him at least, well, at least sell him, his wife, and his kids, and his possessions. Back in those days, it was legal for a boss to do that kind of thing, right? Well, Frank throws himself to the ground and begs to be given more time to pay. That's not going to make it. He has all the time in the world. He's not going to pay that back. It's impossible to pay that back. See the parallels here with what God has done for you and for me? Peter's got to know he's being set up here a little bit. So out of pity for him, the boss tells his henchman to release Frank, and the boss forgives Frank's debt, cancels the debt, says it's all, I mean, there's, there's no refinancing needed, there's no, no balloon payment, no paying just the interest, no paying me back as you can. No, the boss forgives the whole shooting match, cancels the debt. 
think about that. That's like the IRS saying, you know, you've never paid taxes in your entire life, plus 50 other lifetimes. You owe us all that. But you know what? We're going to forgive you that. Forget about it. Don't even worry about it. If you get another notice about it, just throw it away. What a relief that would be, right? Frank is free here, folks. There's no worries. Happy ending, right? He doesn't have to pay anything back. He's got his wife, his kids, his stuff. He doesn't have to do anything. No worries. Happy ending, right? Not so fast. As Frank leaves his boss's house, he sees another servant who owes him a couple of bucks. Uh, more than just a couple of bucks, 100 denarii. Uh, a denarii was one day's worth of wage for the average person. So, I mean, you're talking about a third of a year's salary. That's not something to sneeze at. But in relation, comparison to what he owed, 200,000 years worth of salary. <laughs> it's just a little bit, right? So he grabs this guy who owes him the 100 denarii, Let's call him George and grabs him by the throat and says, pay what you owe. And George hits his knees and begs Frank for more time to settle his debt, which, by the way, is payable. I mean, he could pay him back that much. But Frank refuses and throws George into prison until he can pay up. And although Frank has been forgiven a debt of 200,000 years worth of salary, which is just you know, unpayable, he cannot find it in his heart to go easy on George over 100 denarii. Clearly, Frank needs forgiveness training. His forgiveness is a bit flabby. And when Frank's fellow servants see what's happened, they're horrified. They report it to the boss. What they saw, the boss summons Frank, and Frank asks him, and, and asks, uh, summons Frank and asks him, the boss says, should you not have had mercy on George as I had mercy on you? Remember, in a few minutes, we're going to pray in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, which means we're asking God to use the same measuring stick on us that we use on others. You know, I found that the older I get, the less judging I do because there's really nothing anyone has ever done to me or could ever do to me that I haven't done to God. It's really as simple as that. And that's why Jesus died for us. We can't, we can't possibly pay back, pay back our debt. We can't possibly do that. And that's why Jesus died for us. That's why we must accept that gift as a sacrifice. A thief on the cross. <laughs> Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Forgiveness. You see, sin has no business being in God's presence. So if we're going to be in God's presence, then we leave all of our sin at the foot of the cross. We have to. Jesus takes that burden from us. Thanks be to God. So Frank knows that he's pretty busted. The boss has little patience with him, and so God will do to every one of you, promises Jesus, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Oh, my. Jesus is a pretty tough fitness coach, don't you think? He demands that we forgive other people based on the fact that we have been forgiven this unbelievable amount. He insists that we make the choice to forgive day after day, and turn it into a process that makes us stronger and stronger. And by the way, forgiveness has its physical benefits too. You know, study after study, it's shown that those folks who are able to forgive, able to release all that, have much less stress, live longer, live healthier the longer they live. Those who tend to hold on to things, who, who chew on things, who aren't able to forgive tend to stress themselves to death. And that's been proven over and over and over again. So Jesus says, forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Lord wants us to get stronger and healthier and more mature in the faith as we follow him by making that decision to forgive. 
and then turning that choice into a process. And by process, I don't mean step one, step two, step three, step four. What I mean is this, that forgiveness becomes as natural to us as breathing. That forgiveness becomes as natural to us as breathing. Wouldn't that be something? Forgiveness is difficult, friends. That's certainly true. But Jesus knows that forgiveness is good for us, body, mind, spirit, which is why he commands us to offer it up to one another. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that and challenged to forgive. So here's the thing. Is there someone in your life at work, at school, at home who needs your forgiveness? Does your heart need to be relieved of the burden of carrying a grudge? In other words, do you need to forgive? Do you need to know that God has forgiven you all your sins through Jesus? If you don't know that, now's the time. Now's the time to lay your sins at the foot of the cross and invite Jesus into your heart. Say, Lord, I need a good house cleaning. I need you to come into my heart and my life and take me over. I invite you in. Renew me, forgive me, fill me with your grace so I can spend eternity with you, Lord. And if you have accepted the Lord, follow the Lord, are a Christian, and you need to recommit yourself. Maybe that's important to do right now, too, to recommit yourself to following the Lord. Kind of like reaffirmation of wedding vows, right? Recommitting yourself. To Christ. Either way, let me ask you, are you forgiveness flabby or are you forgiveness fit? May God bless you richly this day and every day. May God use you to be a blessing as well. great gift of Holy Communion, let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. 
Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The good news for today is that God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then we pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given and broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. go forth to serve the Lord during this coming week. A couple of very important announcements. We remind you of the important congregational meeting via Zoom next Sunday, September 20 at 11.30 a.m. That will follow Sunday school for both adults and children also via Zoom. The meeting is to call Deacon Diane Schweiger Alexander as our Director of Youth and Family Ministries. You should have received Deacon Diane's background information and the Zoom instructions this week. Please keep this important meeting in your prayers, which also reminds us of September being a special month of prayer for Christ Lutheran Church and our ministry outreach. And now, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen.